right, we're going to go ahead and get started, get this party rolling. Um, so first, hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, my name is Lauren Cassidy. I'm a digital marketing manager here with Sin7, and I'll be emceeing you through this webinar. Uh, I'm very excited to talk to you today about preparing for the holiday sales surge, talking about forecasting, financing, you know, maybe some of the things that people don't talk about all the time when getting prepared for the holidays. Uh, today's real speakers are Redeem and Alex. Um, they have so much subject matter expertise to share with you today um, about forecasting, financing, and what you need to know to make sure that you're prepared for the holidays and that your holidays are successful. Quick agenda. Um, today we're going to go through some of the typical holiday challenges. We'll talk about how you can best forecast for the holiday season as we are rapidly approaching it. We'll talk about invoice financing, what it means, what it is, and then we'll bridge the forecast and financing gap. Uh, I think all of you are probably very well aware of some of the challenges that go into the holidays. Um, you know, there's an increased demand, forecasting accuracy, confusion, you know, how much do I need? How much is too much? How much is too little? Trying to really be prepared for the ins and the outs. And with that is stock outs or overstock. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced uh, the, the terror that comes with realizing you don't have enough of something and, and people want it and you want to provide that for them or having way too much and now you are wasting resources, uh, space, uh, energy, trying to keep track of it all. Um, beyond that, how do you pay for all of this, right? You know, it's, it's a time of increased demand, um, there's a lot of concern on how you're going to make it through the holidays to be successful. And then the overarching theme of all of this is the stress and time management that goes into the holidays. We get it. You're busy. You're busy year round. You're not just busy during the holidays. And so when the holidays do come, it's like adding you know, a mountain of more responsibility. So how can you prevent that mountain from overcoming you um, and overwhelming you? Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about forecasting. Let's talk about Inventoro. Redeem, let's dive in. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I think that, you know, that, that we are a part of Sin7 is, should be in our news by this time because we've uh, communicated it so often and on so many webinars equally that I don't, I don't want to sort of brag about our ability, but. Obviously, the, the KPIs that are ahead of you are closely associated with our product, right? So we use algorithmic forecasting that gives us a high probability of understanding future sales. If we understand future sales, then we can control the inventory of today, essentially leading to having just the perfect amount of stock, not too much, not too little, just the perfect amount to satisfy demand avoiding stockouts, and at the same time, not having too much. That's <laughs> that's the that's the core of what we do. But I think that for today, and given the topic of this webinar, we, we want to talk about this preparing for the, the season, right? So what the the first the the biggest perks of forecasting is understanding your replenishment needs for right now okay what do i need to sort of replenish today or this week or this month right there these are the most immediate questions right, that we try to answer but equally we we, we aim to answer long-term questions as well right? so typically businesses that would be black friday dependent is, is that is that a dependency can i just use that phrase <laughs> just whatever it is uh, you know, prone to high seasonality that would be associated with just a couple of days of food. This could be sales, this could be Black Friday, this could be Easter, this could be summer sales, it doesn't really matter. They need to prepare way ahead, way ahead of that season. Now, forecasting obviously comes in to that part as well, right? So we, we, we give you the ability to take a look at your, look at your Christmas sales right now, right? So Right now, I could run our app and tell you this is the projected sort of sales that it's going to hit you in, in December and it's going to hit you in January. Now, 
the, the first information you get, it's going to be a lot, which, you know, is the, which is the good news. The, then the complicated part is how do we prepare our inventory for it? It's not only about the ability to pile up, but it's also about the ability to gather enough money. So we have the, the finances to actually purchase everything to satisfy the high demand in the future. So essentially, and the reason why we're sort of having, uh, we're sitting over here in a tandem is, is the fact that forecasting and financing are closely related, right? If you wanna, if you wanna avoid stockouts, you need to purchase. If you wanna purchase, you need money, right? And you need that money, and you need to find that money way before you purchase, right? Having a product that gives you gives you the cash you need on the spot when you need it is something that I would wish for everybody to have, but it's not quite the case many times. Man. So whatever we are trying to do over here at Sin7, and me and Alex have been talking about this many times, it's just to merge the products together. How do we sort of connect forecasting to financing to, to bring that sort of br brilliant sort of connection of understanding what needs to be bought and, and the finances for it? Right? That's not what we're going to show you today. This is the philosophy of <laughs> why forecasting and financing is important, but I just want to say that whatever we forecast and whatever we recommend always drills down to finance. So I'll uh, just use that to, to hand over the word for the next slide. Okay, so as I said, you know, the, the what to replenish, when to replenish and how much to replenish is as important today as it is in, in December, right? And there's two strategies that you can take when you're piling up, right? When you're piling up for Black Friday, if you're a conservative business and you don't have the money, and you don't have the finances, and you don't have the skill, and you don't have the, I would say, logistical capacity, you start piling up slowly. Like you really start in, in, in summer and then you just gradually build up, right? We're here to make sure you don't overpile or underpile. Right? So we were actually talking like if overpiling and underpiling is a word. It's probably not, but we all understand what, what we mean by overpiling and underpiling. So to understand is what needs to be what to replenish, when to replenish, and how much to replenish is not only relevant to, to this week, it's also relevant to, to the long run, right? So you can have a strategy of gradually piling up, or if you have the courage and you have the finances and you have the team and you you have the experience you can wait for the last week and then pile up everything you know over over a short period of time which, which would be the more successful more money making larger margin making strategy but also much more complicated right so for this for the b strategy obviously uh, forecasting not only on inventory it's also people forecasting it's also uh, warehouse forecasting it's also finance forecasting it's all of these need to come hand in hand and, and, and work together. Next slide, please. Well, thank you. Thank you, Redeem, for, for sharing that um, wisdom and also being a great segue, <laughs> setting up a great segue. Yeah, I think just to, to kind of um, emphasize or underline those points i think what we're what we're talking about today is how do you prepare and there's two pieces of that um ensuring that you have the right data and right forecast to understand okay i need this inventory or 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 like you said redeem like even even forecasting for the inventory but also like all aspects of your business do you have labor ready to go do you have you know all of the 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 components that add up to your business um that is your first piece in understanding and preparing for a a busy a holiday season but then the second piece is ensuring that you have the funds to make all of those things happen, right? Ensuring that you have the cash flow to um, pile up and you know um, and to uh, prepare. And so, like like Redeem said, I think is you know we're we're working on the easy button for the forecasting forecasting piece. Um, we're working on the easy button for the financing piece as well. But um, the truth is, you know, like that cash flow is always going to be needed. So how do we how do we address that? 
How do we help you to make sure that you have the cash on hand to achieve your goals, to prepare once you have that forecast? Because um, we're all hopeful that your forecast is, you know, that that your sales are going to be great, right? And but um, that uh, that good problem to have of you having great sales may come with, you know, you need to pile up. You need to increase your inventory on hand to be able to meet that demand. So with uh, the financing piece, that's kind of what I'm uh, trying to help with and build on. Um, so kind of traditional ways that a business may access financing if they don't have the cash on hand um, to increase their cash flow in preparation for holiday season or whatever it may be, um, maybe like a traditional bank loan or even looking at purchase order financing or um, term loan, working capital, uh, line of credit. All of these are things that you might be interested in obtaining, right? And there are various avenues to obtain them. Like I said, kind of traditional avenue, maybe going to a bank, um, applying for a loan, applying for business line of credit, whatever it may be. Um, and that can be great. If that is something you have access to, you have the ability to do, you have also the time to do it because one, one thing is, uh, or one kind of like potential downside could be that um, they're not known for being extremely quick, right? Um, so again, if you kind of have this great forecast that you um, really need to stack up and you have a limited amount of time to do it, you may be looking for alternatives, um, right? For kind of increasing your cash flow. So one product that we have been working on, and we, I'm excited to announce we 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 actually launched last week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, we it, it, it's something called Sin Seven Capital. So if you haven't heard about that before, um, Sin Seven Capital is our embedded lending product. So we are aiming, like Redeem said, we're aiming to bring these things together in our product. Um, as well to kind of like a, like like we've underlined the there are two halves of, of one hall right we want to give you the forecasting and we want to give you access to the financing to once you have your forecast make those kind of new, new dreams of your business come true what we have in some seven capital right now we're kind of going small and building up as you may be doing and you know um in various parts of your business including preparing for the holidays but we're what we're starting with is and and lauren you're happy to happy to go to the next slide here <laughs> What we're starting with is invoice financing. So we're kind of offering Sin7 Capital initially in our product, initially to users of uh, Sin7 Core and, that are based in the United States. And that is because financing kind of has some regulatory bounds around it. And so currently that's what we're able to offer. And we're able to offer a financial product called invoice financing, which I'll talk about a bit more um, in a second here. But those are where we're starting, but we're hoping to grow too. And and feedback welcome. I want to just kind of throw that out there too, that if, if as you're preparing for the holidays, as you're running your business, as you do every day, I'm happy to hear uh, what, what you're seeing in the market, what you might be interested in as well. Um, but to, to kind of explain what invoice financing is, how it works as a product, a financial product, is that it is a, um, sometimes you might hear it be called invoice factoring, if that's a term you might be more familiar with. Um, same thing, uh, but it's a form of business financing that allows you to, um, it's shorter term, and um, it allows you to kind of increase your cash flow by quickly accessing a, a um, relatively small loan that can be larger, but it tends to be um, smaller increments over a shorter period of time, which may work well for your business, especially if you're kind of tying it to building up stock. You may want to kind of do a large purchase, um, get some uh, help 
some access to cash, um, improve your cash flow management to achieve that purchase and then pay it back. And now you're looking ahead. So invoice when it's in is an unsecured um, product, meaning there's no physical collateral against it. But what you what you do is you apply for um, financing with um, through our product. It's right in the SIN 7 core platform. Um, and then you, um, if approved, get a um, available credit limit, uh, which might be a larger number. And then what you can do is choose which invoices you apply to get financing against that credit limit. So you don't have to borrow the full amount that you're approved for unless you want to. Um, but uh, yeah, so it, it uh, it's a fast access to cash. Um, our lending partner that we're working with has a service level agreement, SLA, of two days um, for the application process. Um, so you can really kind of, you're looking at getting cash in potentially as, as little as two days, maybe even less. Um, so that is a benefit, but then it, the kind of limitations that it might have is that it's also, like I said, a short-term product. So you can access, let's let's say, you know, these are just theoretical numbers I get, and there's no guarantee to what they may be, but let's say you got like a hundred thousand dollar credit limit. You want to quickly access some cash and have some outstanding customer invoices. So these are completed customer orders um, that are out like that are completed, but unpaid and outstanding. So um, it is like you have a promise from your customer that they'll pay you and, you know, N30, N60, whatever your terms are, um, that you'll, that they'll pay you. And so, but that's not cash you have on hand, right? So what you can do with the invoicing product is get that cash in two days um, to then pay back in 30 or 60 days, depending on what you qualify for and what you choose. You can choose which repayment plan. Um, and then that, like I said, uh, unlock some cash flow, which then you can apply to whatever you need to in your business, right? It could be applying to building up your labor pool. You could be applying to, you know, um, buying out some stock to uh, get ready for the holiday season. Whatever your business needs, um, you can apply those funds to, and then you'll repay them uh, based on the terms that you select. So usually, typically 30 to 60 days. So there are some limits to that, like we said, you know, uh, including that you have to have invoices. You have it's it's uh, going to be more applicable if you have like probably a B two B business, right? Because you are um, you have invoices and long long term commitments with your customers rather than like a direct consumer business. You probably don't have an invoice with an N sixty term, um, right? So there are some limits on that, but it is um, available now for you to check out. Uh, like I said, interested in feedback, happy to um, help kind of walk through what it might look like. Um, it is the, the, the start of the SIN7 Capital product and platform that we hope to build on to include um, more financial products like, like term loans. Um, we're also looking at building out to more at geographies, right? We are aware that we have a very global customer base. Um, so we're also working on building out the availability, but uh, just to kind of like bring it home, how this might be helpful. Again, it's, it's you know, not uh, not offering financial advice. I'm not that smart, but, <laughs> um, but uh, excited to offer this, right? It, it, like, you know, a acknowledging that it's a starting point for us as well. This is a very new thing. Uh, I think, you know, it's, I would say it's an innovative thing in our business um, that we're trying to kind of provide to our customers. Um, you all, <laughs> or, or if you're not customers yet, hopefully maybe you will be, but um, it's a it, it's a new thing that we're trying out, but I am excited that it may be beneficial, right? So again, if your forecast determines that your stock is not going to meet your demand, especially as you're looking for whatever season it may be, but looking towards the end of year, 
um, hopefully this, this, you know, may be an option for you. It may be, uh, like, like I said, that's a good problem to have, right. That your demand kind of, um, is so high, but, uh, hopefully this can help you to, uh, address that by unlocking some cash flow from your receivables ahead of time. Yeah. Thank so, oh, yeah, sorry. no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I think you covered a lot of information just then <laughs> in the best possible way. Um, what I think would be beneficial if you're comfortable is just kind of showing what this looks like in our product. Um, you know, we we understand that the holidays can be, again, very stressful. Um, and, and you've touched on how this can help to ease some of that stress. So if you're comfortable, I'd love to do a quick demo or, or show um, what this looks like on our end. Um, we do have some questions coming in right now. This does just live in Sin 7 Core um, with the uh, exciting opportunities for it to expand in the near future. Um, and I would love for you to speak a little bit more to that. And, and maybe you and Redeem can talk a little bit about, you know, what our plans look like for the future, how this can be applicable um, to prospects and, and to prospective customers and to customers as they're considering what their inventory needs are in the future. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen, Alex, if you want to take it away. And then we will leave some time for questions, but if there are other questions coming in, now is a great time um, to start sharing them um, and we'll we'll get those answered for you today. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So I am going to share um, a video just prepared in case I, we had any technical difficulties. I just wanted to make sure we had it ready to go, <laughs> but it's a video without any audio. So I'm going to just kind of speak to it. So hopefully that looks good. Um, oh, one moment. I thought I had it prepared. Isn't this always the way? Of <laughs> technical difficulties. No, but, but before you do, I just I just want to slip in with, with like a simple thought, right? I mean, as you as you work your business, you're gathering a lot of information in inside core and Omni that could be extremely useful to the lender, right? To the financial institution, right? Because it does a lot, a lot more than your just basic financial records, than your true health, than your true uh, operations basically can strip you. So if you're prepared to share that information with a lender, we, we as an organization sh should be that one-click solution for you to allow you to do that. Obviously, we're not sharing information with lenders without your permission, but but to give you that ability, like, hey, hey, take a look at my data, look at my sales, look at my margins. I mean, like, and offer me the best available product based on the information you see. Is that sort of like, you know, long-term vision and goal that we're trying to achieve over here before we get the video working, obviously? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for your team. I think that's a really great point and, and is definitely what we're working towards um, because just to kind of underline that again, like as you run your business, you have access, you have a, a ton of data that goes into running your business every day. Right. And so what we're hoping to do and what we're Redeem and I are kind of looking to work together on is how do we um, make that data work for you? Right. How can we can we make it easy for you to apply that data, that historical data, but also that forward looking forecast um, and the level of accuracy that we think we can kind of provide in that forecast? Um, can that help you help you unlock? Lock additional streams of capital. So yeah, yeah, I think that's a great point. And also, I think we're ready to go. <laughs> so also, yeah, a good good cover. Thank you. Now, um, so yeah, I'd like to share some information. This may look familiar. This is Sin Seven Core. Um, this is meant to see. You may have seen this already. That we have a new uh, dashboard widget that's kind of like sharing that this is available. This is Sin Seven Capital. So this is just kind of linking to where you go. So in the integrations um, space. And I'll pause this because it might be moving a little faster than I can talk. Um, uh, but this is the integration space. You can find the Sin7 Capital page in the integrations module. It's on the homepage if you're in the US. Um, and it's also under a financing space. But essentially, this is 
very easy. I mean, it's kind of basic, to be honest, but that was our goal is to make it very easy so that it's essentially all you're doing is clicking on this button to begin your financing application, and then you are providing some information about your business. Um, so this is going to our lending um, partner, which is a business called Camla, which happy to share more information there too, but it's essentially we're filling out some information about the business. So here's my business is called Art Supplies by Alex. I'm providing some basic information. There is a personal guarantee for this um, financial product, but there is no hard credit check. So it is a, a soft pull, if you're familiar with that term, um, that is going through and it's looking at some, uh, I'll pause it one more second here to just talk about, It's uh, you do have to connect with a business bank account. So that uses a third, a third party service called Plaid, or if you're not able to use Plaid with your particular bank account, there's another option. But essentially, once you connect that bank account, that's where your disbursements will go automatically. So that's also partly like why they're able to provide that funding so quickly is that it goes directly into that same bank account that you kind of attach. And then um, based on your terms, if you pick a 30 day term, 60 day term, right, that's going to determine your payment date. Um, and the, but when when uh, the payment is due, they will automatically draft from that same bank account. So again, goal is to make it very easy. Um, and, and that's kind of how we're providing that. So at this point, we're just sharing like how to access the terms of service, things like that. Again, hopefully it's coming across. It's pretty easy to do um, of just walking through that application process. And now you can see in reality, if you were to do this, you'd probably have um, uh, an up to two day wait, um, but it is pretty quick. Uh, I will say I've kind of seen it in action. Um, and then if you if approved, this is the now we're going through and uh, accepting that offer. So you can see um, as an example, this this business, Alex's Art Supplies, got a hundred thousand dollar credit limit and got uh, two available plans so I can get um, 30 days to pay back and a 2% fee. So 2% of what I ask for, like what I apply to um, my credit limit, the disbursement amount, or I can get a little bit more time to pay back, but with a little bit higher fee. Those are kind of the terms. So now I'm walking through and uh, agreeing to that. And then there's a little bit more kind of like um, verification of identity or business uh, information kind of that's happening now through this. Um, and then it should go through. And now I have an available credit limit. So congratulations, Alex's Art Supplies, right? <laughs> Um, then the final step is to go to the sales module and actually, so I have that available credit limit. I don't have $100,000 in my bank account. What I have to do is decide how much do I actually want to borrow up to that amount, right? So now I'm going in the sales module and from there, I can actually apply those invoices to my credit limit. So I am saying, okay, here are the sales that I have. Um, please give me X amount, you know, in, in, in exchange for, and like, here's how I can kind of show that I'm good for it. Right. With these invoices. So now I'm picking one invoice that was pretty low amount, right. I might actually want to get more than that, but, um, just to kind of show an example. And yeah, that's, like, that's it. Yeah. Maybe this yeah. is a related question. Is there sure. a correlation between, um, you know, how your forecasting impacts maybe your financing? Like, do you go into it with any um, understanding of now I know what my forecasts are, how do I, how do I best use that when pursuing financing? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. And definitely what I would recommend, right? This is kind of the the synergy of this uh, webinar is that we're, we're trying to provide like, like, um, when you go into a decision to take on debt in your business, which, you know, all financing uh, options are going to be some form of debt, some forms of debt are more or less risky than others, right? Um, but when you decide to make that decision, we really recommend that that you'd have a good idea of 
what what is what is going to be your return right and and what are you looking at in terms of forecasting to kind of be able to pay that back right and and so it's it's two-sided it's making sure that you're um in a good financial space but also the forecasting piece can help when you're looking to like like we've mentioned let's say you don't have enough stock on hand to meet your demand um, for for the holidays or whatever your rush season may be, right? So um, I think what what we're working on is being able to really uh, mesh those in our product, right? So you can see that very clearly right next to each other. That's that's something that we don't have quite yet. We kind of wanted to get this out out there with with a an MVP, um, but uh, yeah. I think that's hopefully that answers that question, but happy to take any more. Yeah, I think, and maybe Radine, this might be more for you, but when you're, you know, when you're doing these forecastings, are there specific uh, data points or factors that you think are like top to consider in your forecasting plan? Um, not just during the holidays, but maybe year round is something that you need to be actively paying attention to. Oh, well, for sure. Um, we have a we have we distinguish products. You know, between the the quality of their sales, or shall I say, how important are they to the to your business, right? And the most important ones we call them winners. The the less important ones we call them chasers. And then we have the last category which we call losers. And you can have a guess on how important those are to your business. But let's um, let's concentrate on the uh, on the winners, right? They they're usually a very small number of uh, items. And they create, let's say, eighty percent of your of your entire business, and that's very typical for retail, also wholesale. I mean, anytime you're a product seller, this tends to happen. I mean, this this thing just keeps on coming back and back again. You have top sellers. So if you want to compromise, don't compromise on your top sellers. If you don't have money to buy everything, just buy the top sellers, right? <laughs> and if if you don't even have money to buy your top sellers, look at the ones that are you know, in a stock out or going into a stock out, right? Because there's nothing worse than having a stock out with a winner, right? I mean, you can have a stock out with a loser or with a chaser. It's, it's bad. It's not a huge deal. You have a stock out on a winner, you're just losing money every day, right? So prevent those like, you know, critical moments. When you want to decide, just use that. I mean, like, obviously our app is a great place to make, you know, a distinguished, you know, to, to distinguish, you know, the numbers, from one another over there, you can you can pivot the replenishment needs to to the single sort of penny of understanding how much you would actually need for to, to purchase your to purchase your uh, winners that are in a stock out. Right, this that's a number that is like available in our app right now. Like if you don't have the app, obviously you, you do need to spend a little bit of time with with Excel. But I'm just giving general advice over here. Right, if you don't have all the money. Invest everything into into your top sellers. That's the easy part. Not easy, but obvious. Sorry. <laughs> I I think maybe you, you kind of answered it, but maybe and both this is to both of you. Um, can you identify what you think are some common mistakes that people make it, it, for financing purposes or even for forecasting, um, especially as we enter the holidays? Are there big things that they should avoid? Um, and even beyond that, and alternatively. Um, can you maybe identify what the greatest perk is of using forecasting to predict your financing? I think it's maybe an obvious answer, like long-term success. Um, but if you have an answer that can dive in a little bit deeper, that would be awesome. Okay, I'll, I'll just start. I, th I think there's a mistake. Uh, it's a hero complex, right? I mean, like if you're running your business and, and you started slow and everything was in your head and you used your intelligent person used common sense to run your business and you think that's going to last forever right and you run to a to a point where it stops working and you you're not honest with yourself and you don't sort of you think you, you just keep on applying the same rules same strategy same everything going forward that's a mistake right so honesty or lack of yeah, and I'll jump in real quick because I, I think 
what immediately came to mind for me, um, I think is somewhat similar, right? Because it, what came to mind for me of what could be a potential mistake is not looking ahead enough, right? Like, like I think there, there, I, uh, oftentimes if you're running a business, uh, and a, especially the product-based business, you may kind of like by the time you decide that you're interested in achieving or like obtaining financing of some sort, it may be too late or, or not too late. Right. Because I don't want to like put it out there that, that anyone's business is going to fail or anything like that. But, but the, the hole may be bigger, hole may be bigger by the time you kind of dig out of it. If you're not really looking ahead and trying to be smart with yourself and with the data that you have access to, to, to kind of like acknowledge that you may need some financing, um, to cover it gaps in your cash flow, um, but also to prepare for success because all of your winners are going to sell, you know, like, uh, so it's, it's, that's what I would say is a potential mistake when, when thinking about business financing. Kind of what I'm hearing from the two of you, and I, and maybe not a surprise, and hopefully not a surprise to anyone on this call, is that it, what's the term? Uh, if you plan to, or if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And so what I'm hearing is that if you're not thinking actively every day and reflecting on how can I move forward, what do I need for the future, you're really setting yourself up for failure. Um, and even more specifically. And of course, we're biased because we have this software and we have this opportunity for you. But like, if you don't invest in, um, and, and maybe it's not the right fit for everyone, but if you don't invest in a, a solution uh, that, that can help you plan and stay ahead of those needs, uh, you're, you're going to be one step behind as, as you move forward. So um, I think maybe that's the greatest takeaway from today is that like, if you want to be set up for holiday success let's start thinking three steps ahead instead of thinking reactively, which we've heard from a lot of businesses is what they're doing. Um, I think that might be, for me, the greatest takeaway for today and, and the best way to end. But before we do, Redeem, Alex, thank you so much. If there's anything else you want to share um, or talk about, now is the time. Um, anything from either of you? Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks thank everyone you for, for your time. Yeah. Yeah. This was yeah. great. And uh, we'll be following thank you. All for, thank you all for coming. Yeah. And, and we'll send a recording out. So uh, please keep a lookout for that. Um, if you have questions, you can always reach out to us and we'll dive deeper into um, forecasting with Sin7, Sin7 Sin Capital. We're happy to talk about it. Um, but otherwise, thanks so much. And, you know, happy early holidays, everyone. We hope you achieve everything you want. Yeah. Best wishes for everybody. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.